Okay, we're unmuted. Okay, good. Um, I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District uh, for August 17th, 2024. Uh, Jen, will you please take the roll? Sure. Vice President Smiley? Here. Director Floats? Here. Director Lang? Here. Director Lage? Here. Right. And we have a quorum. I would like to note that uh, President Hill is um, not able to attend due to a medical issue, and I would recommend that he be excused. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, moving on then. Uh, I'm not aware of any changes to the uh, closed session agenda. No. Staff has not. Mm -hmm. uh, oral communications regarding items in the closed session. Uh, we have three items in the closed session. Uh, does anybody want to comment on those items? Does any member of the public want to comment on those three items that we have in front of us? Uh, Mr. Hall. Hey, I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, as usual, I don't know what the anticipated location item is tonight, uh, but there was one a month ago at the September 19th meeting and let's see, I'm trying to remember, there's so many meetings. Um, I guess what I really wanted to say was, uh, I watched the video of the September 9th meeting the week after the meeting. And then by the second week, it had disappeared from the community TV website. And then when it showed up again later that week, it was redacted, it had uh, some time taken out of the meeting and it was redacted. So because, because the meeting showed up on Community TV as usual uh, and that was redacted later, I guess I inferred that the board decided that it needed to be redacted at your last meeting. Um, and I guess I'm getting a shake of the head there. So maybe it's just your dist district council uh, who redacted, who asked for the uh, video to be redacted. So I think it's a new low for this district that what actually took place in an open meeting uh, has been redacted from the video. So what I remember was that at a certain point, Director Largay spilled the beans. He um, breached confidentiality of closed session. Uh, he said there was potential litigation with uh, Brian Fries, and that's why Brian Fries got a $100,000 bonus. So that's what was set up. Now, the whole time during the meeting, the district council was present. And what I would expect, if that were my lawyer, I would expect that she would have stopped the um, disclosure of confidential information when it started to happen in the meeting. Um, so I think that was not a performance on the part of the district council. And you really ought to put a performance evaluation for the district council on a future agenda. Um, and I think that I, I request that the unredacted video be replaced. We also, it was said, it was in an open session. Uh, so nothing's really being retained by redacting the video. So I, I request that it be put back uh, in its entirety on the community TV website. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody from the online public uh, wish to comment on any of the closed session items that we have in front of us this evening? Seeing none. Uh, we will transition to closed session now. Uh, we'll return to open session at uh, 6.30. Thank you. I have 6.30, so 
I'd like to reconvene this meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for August 17th, 2024. Uh, Jen, will you take the roll? Sure. Again? Yep. Vice President Smalley? Here. Director Fultz? Here. Director Lorgay? Here. Director Lane? Here. Okay, um, we have nothing to report out um, on any actions taken in the closed session. <coughs> um, staff have any changes to the agenda that they wish to yeah. bring up? Okay, all right. Uh, oral communications uh, for members of the public that want to bring up an item. Uh, to the board that is not within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda this evening. Uh, does anybody from the public uh, want to bring up anything? Uh, seeing none online and nobody here, um, we will then proceed to unfinished business. We have none, uh, new business. Uh, the first item is the uh, five mile pipeline environmental review contract. Uh, Chris, are you presenting that one? Yeah, I'll be presenting that. Okay. Um, yeah, so this item is the five mile pipeline environmental review contract. Um, the basics of it is that we are going to replace our five mile pipeline, which burned in the CZU fire in the same manner as we were, uh, are in the progress of replacing the Peavine pipeline. Um, so the first step in that process is to get an environmental review and permitting process going. And uh, to that end, we put on RFP and based on the proposal we received, uh, we selected Harris as our consultant for this project. Um, and so we are bringing that to you today. Um, I'll open it now to any questions that you may have. Okay. All right. Uh, Brian. We'll put it up with you. Uh, I have no questions. I've worked with Harris. Uh, they're a mm -hmm. uh, very professional organization. It's great to add a little bid. They've worked with us before. I'm, I'm comfortable with the proposal. Okay. Alina? Um, yeah, I just had a just a quick question about um, it said in there it says uh, it says to it will be reviewed to identify major differences in permitting requirements for above ground versus below ground alternatives. I thought we kind of decided that we were going above ground, or is it something else to this? Yes, um, it is going above ground. Uh, that's kind of a misunderstanding in their proposal. Uh, okay. So yes, it is going above ground. Okay. Um, there is a kind of what I was referring to in the um, RFP that prompted this mm -hmm. is we are looking at what to do with the soil uh, when we kind of uh, rebuild the trail. There's going to be soil and we're considering potentially just putting it back on top of the pipe as a uh, minute fire protection. Um, but it would not be burying of any sort. Okay. Okay. So, and that explains. All right. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Well, well officially, the last decision we made on bearing was for P-Vine only. Um, so what I'm hearing is, right, I mean, if you go back and look at the at the vote, it was specifically around P-Vine. Um, but uh, what I'm hearing here is that we also want to make the decision now to go ahead and do uh, above ground for uh, this five, five mile pipeline as well. Um, because that hasn't been set in policy with any prior vote. Okay. Um, uh, this, this item is for the environmental review and permitting. The design of it will come um, a little bit later. Once we're able to fully survey the pipeline, we're unable to right now because there are hazardous trees out there. And so we need to be able to remove the hazardous trees before we can survey and then ultimately get a um, working design going. Yeah, so this is just for the trees, not for the entire... No, so this will be a two-phase. Two um, so the first phase will be the permitting for the removal of the trees. And then once we remove the trees, uh, we will get a design going. And then once we have the design, they will move forward with the um, review of the pipeline trail rebuild, and then ultimately the pipeline rebuilding, which we imagine will be um, handled together in one permitting process. In, in 
So I was a little bit confused by the reference to the ISMND in the in the description here. Some of them included it, some didn't. Yes. Um, we will need one, correct? Uh, it is most of the proposals understanding that we will not, mm -hmm. that exemptions will suffice. Okay. Uh, however, some of them did uh, choose to include it as a secondary option. Um, some of them didn't. That's why you see like the ones that had it baked in, I couldn't uh, give an even, you know, uh, judgment to in terms of dollar value. Yeah. So, but if we get any pushback from any organization or what have you, we may be forced to go into a ISMD. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, and and you know, five miles is a long way, and that that is a much tougher terrain than either format or P-line. Um, so the possibility of getting some pushback, I think, exists. Uh, but if we don't need it for this phase of just taking the trees out, that's that's fine. Have we used Harris before? I, I didn't. We have. Yes, okay. we have. That's good. And has FEMA agreed to ninety percent for this project already? I yes. wasn't. I wasn't aware that they'd agreed to it for this pipeline yet um i am not 100 percent sure we understand that because it's under uh or it's from that same emergency that we would be eligible for uh 90 percent i'm not sure if we have initiated the process of actually um engaging okay with FEMA on this project and okay that's my understanding but implied from what no, I, I, I get it. Gentlemen, but I don't know that that's... I, I, that's, that's why I'm asking, yes. because that yes. number right. swings pretty widely if it's 75 versus yes. 90, right. or if they say, hey, we're not doing it all. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Right, so uh, again, that shouldn't hold up getting rid of the hazard trees. I, I, I get that part, <clears throat> but um, it would be good to make sure that we're in, engaged with FEMA on this so that they're they're aware of it. They owe us a ton of money, right? And that's starting to really not be a good thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and with a new fiscal year in place, it's like, come on, guys, we need some money here. Um, okay. And same thing with the trees, basically just going to cut and leave them. Yeah, um, we're going to lop and scatter. That's the um, standard method of operation in this type of... Um, Okay. Hazard shooter. Great. Thanks for thanks for answering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I should have Sorry. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, similar to Alina, I uh, had a question on the they're gonna evaluate undergrounding. No, we don't need that done. Okay. Uh, and similar to Bob, uh, the question on the ISM and D, uh, it was clear to me in your memo where you point out uh, two of the firms included that ISMND. I'm implying then that Harris did not. Correct. Correct. Okay, so Harris does not. But then I see in their assumptions statements too along the lines of when we submit the ISMND for public review. So I, based on what you're saying is no, they don't have cost for ISMND in their bid. That those statements are a uh, from a cut and paste from a previous proposal because they're not doing an ISMND. So therefore, how could they plan to submit one for public review? That's correct. Uh, and also, if it does end up uh, going to an ISMND, being pushed to that, um, that language, you know, uh, wouldn't, but wouldn't hurt, but yes. But we don't have a cost from them. No, this do proposal does not include an ISM. Proposal, okay, I, I did want to you know, make that clear. Okay, all right. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you were able to get seven bids. And to me, it looks like for this type of work, uh, it's in about the 100,000 for that. And Harris is at 90. Good. The two outliers uh, on this, uh, Aspen and S S Aspen and Surf the Snow, 
I think clearly don't understand what the district's looking for. Panorama did, Harris did, one or two of the others did also. So good on that. Uh, the My interpretation of that is the RFP was well enough written then that other firms understood what we were looking for. Good, good. Okay, all right. Um, so before I make a motion, uh, I'd like to know whether anybody from the uh, public um, has a comment on this uh, proposal to issue a contract to Harrison Associates for um, work. Um, I do see one member of the public online, uh, Nicole Launder Burridge. Uh, do you wish to comment on this? Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear myself. <laughs> It's coming back at me. All I was going to answer was Bob's question is that for the CZU fire, it is a 90 10 split for federal versus um, sub recipient. Um, that's a result of the Ukraine war and how that funding is. So for fire, um, they increased the coverage by the federal government. So if this item was on your damage inventory for the CZU fire, then it would be 90% federal government. That's it. Okay. Thank you. So not seeing anybody else uh, with a comment, um, I'd like to make the motion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see anybody jumping up, so, okay. Hi, Karen Brown, north of Boulder Creek. And I wanna know just how many groups are we gonna have work on these trees from the PV pipeline? We have panoramic engineering, which was hired for $99,000 back on March 7th page 47 of the packet. In April, we had the California Conservation Corps to remove 500 trees with their FEMA grant. That was on page 317 on the April 18th board. And so on page 318, we had a forestry to supervise all of this. And then we have Powers Forestry, which we have paid two checks to already to have to do a hazard tree survey. And I think Pam Ramick has already done this. I think the Corps of Civil, the Civil Corps of Engineers have done this. We've already paid them. The Powers Forestry, we've paid them $111,935 to do a hazard tree survey. <clears throat> this is why we don't have money. We have all these people doing the exact same job. We need somebody who is actually watching this. Somebody who says, we already have somebody who's doing that. Instead of us hiring all these repeat people to do the same function. How many people does it take to count 500 trees? How many people does it really take? How many groups to remove these trees? And now I hear you're not even removing it you're gonna cut and put in place. So is that what Powers Forestry has done for us? With their first check, 718. Their second check, 913. And then I also hear that these lines are already done. So what is it? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody else? Um, I don't see other well, Folks anything. online, I don't see anybody else here. Where are you on the agenda? Uh, we're talking about um, a environmental review contract for Harrison Associates. Uh, I think that's item 10A. It is. Okay. Did, did we want to answer any of the questions? Um, I, will, uh, I will quickly address. Um, Karen, the... Uh, California, uh, the CCC are removing the trees. Yes. Uh, we need in, uh, groups like Harris and Panorama to do the environmental reviews before we can touch anything out there. Panorama was doing it on uh, Peavine. Harris is now doing it on another section of pipeline. Um, so that's where we need that. So the Foreman Creek PV pipeline, which is I've read is completed? They're going to be doing a study survey on removing trees um, on something that's complete. Uh, uh, um, on P 
P-Vine. On just the P-Vine. P -vine. Panorama's working P-Vine. Harris is working on other elements of this five mile pipeline section. So, okay. um, so I yeah. see so many contractors There's, working on the same stuff uh, uh, and they're uh, doing repeat, <laughs> cut, copy, paste. So they're going to present this again to you at another board meeting because maybe you forgot what happened back at this board meeting. Uh, I have not forgotten. Okay. The, the board is following. You are. All right. So you're following the work schedule. Yes. You've got the work job board. And, and who's you know doing who's what? doing what? And you're not repeating. <clears throat> no. Okay. And we also trust staff that staff is following. So thank you for paying attention to that. All right. Okay. Um, then I'd like to make the motion that the board of directors <clears throat> approves the agreement with Harrison Associates to conduct the five mile pipeline replacement environmental review for an amount not to exceed. 89,831 and authorizes the engineering manager to execute the agreement. I'll second. Okay. Jen? Okay. President, uh, Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Can I make one comment to staff? Sure. The, um, so I was involved in. Um, uh, a project that involves about eight linear miles of hazard tree management prior to construction. Mm -hmm. And the um, one of the big challenges was that the um, trees kept dying, right? And so uh, the trees that may not be hazard today may become hazard right. soon. So I would just encourage you to try to keep this moving as quickly as possible so that uh, immediately following the assessment, the removal occurs and immediately following the removal, the next round of uh, technical investigations that are pending that removal happen so that um, the, uh, we, we don't have to repeat additional hazard tree removal uh, in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for that now. Okay, moving on to the next item under new business, the um, long line, uh, long <coughs> service line agreement. Yes, okay. so this is for a new meter uh, set for a customer on the north end of our district. And the parcel does not have a district water main uh, in front of the parcel. So what we want to do is set the meter in the right of way, and then the customer will have to get an easement through the neighbor's parcel to get water service. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, then, uh, what questions do we have on this, uh, Bob? Yeah, this is at the far north end of the system, right? Yes. So, but it's still inside of our um, sphere of influence. Yes. Um, no, I, I looked at the agreement. It's the most recent agreement, so thank you for for doing that. Um, since that this agreement takes out some of the things that weren't really good for the customer, and uh, so yeah, let's hopefully he can get that easement if he doesn't already have it. Okay, <laughs> Elena. I have no comment. Brian, I have no comment. Okay, I have one question. Um, we talk in the agreement about a uh, customer needing to do, uh, I think it's uh, periodic inspections, um, and that the customer needs to put in a backflow preventer uh, that, that they own. Correct. Okay. Uh, do we have anything where uh, we see those periodic inspections that need to be done on those? Yes. Okay, so we do have some means to, to check that. Then. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, that's the only question that I had on it then. Okay, uh, does anybody from the public um, have a question or comment on this item for the long line service agreement? Um, Hi, I'm Bruce Holloway from Bull Creek. Um, just, I heard the, the term sphere of influence. Um, so this is outside the district? I, I, I believe it's inside the district. So it's not really in the sphere of influence. It's inside the district. It's in the LAFCO boundary, I believe. Yeah, the LAFCO boundary, yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, problem. Okay. Um, anybody online? Uh, 
uh, have comment on this? Um, seeing none, uh, then I'll make the motion that the uh, board of directors uh, move that the staff uh, adopt a resolution for the approval of an agreement regarding water service for APN number 8705401 in Boulder Creek. Yes. Um, can we add some words to it and authorize the engineering manager to execute oh, the agreement? I, it, it, doesn't, yes. it doesn't have it in here, and I see it's already been executed, but um, yes. it's not official. It's, uh, we... oh, yes. Uh, thank you for that friendly amendment to it. With that in mind, we have a we have a motion. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. That's what I was looking for. Okay. okay. Yeah, please. Vice President Smalley. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Largue. Yes. Director Lane. Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. So, uh, moving on then. Next item is the uh, a contract for an interim general manager. Um, and uh, um, let's see, I think that uh, um, our district council uh, is presenting this. Uh, Barbara? Yeah, good evening, board members. I just wanted to briefly introduce again, uh, Mr. Conkle, you've had a couple of you, I think all of you had a chance to speak with him. Um, he may be in attendance, I'm not sure. He is. He and, is. And I would welcome him to introduce himself as well. And uh, I just indicate that the board's been searching for an intern GM, as uh, did, it, did uh, interview a few different folks. And, uh, John, Mr. Gungle is a retired annuitant under the California Public Employment Retirement System and therefore is restricted to no more than a combined 960 hours during the fiscal year ending June 2025. <laughs> the substantive terms of his agreement is the, if accepted by the board, is uh, will commence on October 28th and will automatically terminate upon the earlier appointment of a permanent general manager by the board or completion of the 960 hours of service. The agreement can be extended past the end of the fiscal year upon board approval. The hourly, hourly rate is $96.15 per hour. There's also a reimbursement cost for housing at a rate of $3,000 per month. There's no other benefits or compensation, and the agreement may be terminated by the district at any time and may be terminated by Mr. Kunkel upon 30 days advance written notice. So um, I, am, I invite Mr. Kunkel to, uh, again, introduce himself to the board members. I'm sure each of you I know have talked to him, but to give the uh, public some notion of um, his background, et cetera, would be invited if he's so willing. Yes. John? Why don't you go ahead? Is he promoted? Uh, he had his hand up. He had his hand up. Uh, he's, he's muted. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, everybody. I apologize for uh, not being able to meet the meeting tonight, but I had a prior uh, commitment that was out of state. Um, just to give uh, people uh, who might be listening and the board already knows my background, but uh, I come from the background. I was an ex-police uh, chief for 19 years for the city of Exeter uh, and became their city administrator. And I've been a city manager for the cities of Kerman, uh, Buellton, an interim manager for the city of Manzanita, Oregon, and most recently interim city manager of the city of Huron, California. And um, I just look forward to uh, working with the board and working with uh, the district staff uh, in meeting the goals and objectives of the district. Uh, I believe that uh, we have a great staff uh, from what I hear. 
and I really look forward to uh, working with them and alongside them. Uh, one of the things I want uh, the public to, to know that I do have an open door policy and that, that extends to board members, staff, and citizens. If I'm in the office, you don't need an appointment to come see me. Uh, please stop by and, and talk to me with any concerns you might have or just uh, poke your head in and say hi. Um, but uh, looking forward to uh, getting uh, uh, started there. Uh, good news is, is my wife and I have found a residence about four minutes away from the district office. And so uh, we'll be moving in uh, Thursday of next week and uh, looking forward to starting on Monday. And I want to thank the board. Uh, uh, hopefully, I haven't voted yet, but hopefully uh, I want to thank the board for their confidence in me. Thank you, Mr. Council. Okay. With that, any questions from the board members? Yes. Uh, comments, questions from the board. Uh, Alina? Oh, I have none. I think we went through quite a bit of it. So, yeah, we want okay. to uh, Brian? Uh, no, I have no questions. We had a good conversation previously. Uh, nice to nice to have you about to join, I, I hope, John. Yeah. Okay. Bob? Uh, no, I'm very excited about, uh, John, you joining the, the team here. Um, I have to admit, when I looked at your resume, I was astounded to find Manzanita, Oregon, which is uh, in my home county where I grew up. Um, so that was that was quite a uh, quite a good thing. So I hope you're a big fan of Tillamook cheese, um, as as I am. Uh, looking forward to having you on board on the 28th. Thanks for uh, thanks for agreeing to do that. And for the general public, uh, John has served interim general manager roles, interim city manager roles uh, for several cities uh, over the last number of years. Um, we're not looking to John as a permanent GM. One of the things that uh, the board is asking John to do is help us through the process to find a permanent general manager. So that is uh, one of his charges that we will have for him. Um, he brings a wealth of management experience. Um, we have a very competent staff on operating a water system. We're looking for um, a manager to help guide uh, staff, board, and the rest of that uh, through this uh, time until we can find a permanent general manager. So. With, with that, one one thing, but he one of the cities that he did manage had they ran their water system, That's so true. he is familiar with with that in that aspect. Just okay. that note. Thank you, and welcome. Okay, uh, so does anybody from the public um, have a question or comment on this? I appreciate the fact that uh, the district has been able to fill this vacancy, at least temporarily. Um, and I guess my biggest question is um, during uh, this new general manager's limited tenure, is it expected or is it possible that uh, consolidation agreements with Brackenbury and Forest Springs might be developed? Or is that something that we'll need to wait or a permanent general manager. Is there any? Is there any deal for that? Is that something that might happen in the next six months? I don't know. We'll be discussing that amongst a number of other things with um, Mr. Kunkel uh, if the board approves uh, moving ahead with his contract. Uh, anybody else from the uh, general public with comment or question? I don't see anybody online. I don't see anybody else here from the general public who's going to jump up. And, okay. All right. Uh, then um, I'd like to make the motion that the board uh, appoint John Kunkel as the interim general manager and approve the interim general manager employment agreement between San Lorenzo Valley Water District and John Kunkel. I would happily second that. Okay. All right. Okay. Roll call vote. Vice President Smalley. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Largate. Yes. Director Lane. Yes. All right. Unanimous. Okay. 
Uh, motion passes. Uh, Mr. Kunkel, welcome. <laughs> So uh, moving on then to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, does anybody from the board want to pull something from the consent agenda? What is it, Bob? I, I was actually a little surprised to see the quarterly reports included in the consent agenda. Um, those are typically separate. I understand. Um, so I had a few questions on that. And so since they were included in the consent agenda and not separate, we Right. Okay. Okay. So, in in the future, though, I think we can just have those as a separate uh, item. Okay. So, um, why don't you proceed with your questions? Well, did you want to? I uh, want you to proceed okay. with your questions. All right. Fair enough. Um. On the Peavine pipeline, this is on page 172. Um, I was, I like, I like tables and, and dates and that sort of thing. I was a little confused about um, the number of months column. Is, is that the total number of months um, that it will take to do the task that's there? So we're expecting uh, Peavine pipe to take one year to construct. So that will include both the um, rebuilding of the trail. So there's going to be dirt work to actually like rebuild the trail and make sure it's at a proper, um, you know, flow level at a proper grade. Um, and then that will also be putting the pipe back in and welding all together and making sure we have stream crossings and all that good stuff. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. is for that phase. Um, that may actually take place over two not during the winter, but um, over two summers, basically, is yeah. what we're talking about, or two dry seasons are talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's, um, I've done a portion of the Peavine Trail, and there's a bench that's like at least five feet wide already there in most places. It's fallen down in others, but you could tell that a bench has been constructed before that's sufficient to uh, walk on and do work and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, on the five mile um, replay, never mind. Okay, we already covered that. Never mind. Uh, the Felton Heights tank, the ongoing project that's <laughs> taken a long time to get here. So the site is all good to, the site from a technical point of view, good to go. Correct. All we need now is to figure out whether or not we can buy it or easement it. Correct. To be able to use it. Where are we with that? I mean, if we had any conversations with the owner here recently, given that the geotech is now complete. We had a meeting with the landowner and with a neighborhood representative. This was in spring, I believe. And they, uh, the landowner had some concerns that need to be addressed if we're going to make the purchase. So that's something that we'll probably have to run with legal to make sure that we're doing things properly. Okay. But it's been a while then since we've had any contact with the gentleman. Yes. Yeah, so right now, the next step is for the civil engineering firm to provide us with a site plan. And that'll show us how big of a piece of land that we need to acquire. Yep. And then uh, making sure that we address all the landowners' concerns. Okay. And making sure that none of the site plan is inside the easement area, because a previous one actually had that. I'm sorry. But... Yeah. So one of the previous site plans for this tank actually had the base of the tank, the skirting around it, inside of the easement, because there's a road. Oh, the road. Yeah. Yes, yes. So just want to make sure everything is out of, outside of the easement. Understood. Right. All right. Um, so the Sandhills Habitat Conservation Plan, which is another item that's been in process for as long as I've been involved with the district, uh, going on almost 10 years now. Um, I thought this was almost done, but from this project plan here on page 173, it doesn't look like we're anywhere close to being done. 
Yeah, we definitely still have a ways to go, but I sense uh, this has been put in the agenda. I have heard an update from our consultant working on this, and she has made progress. Uh, I believe she has finished the revision of chapters one and two, and she is either in the middle of or uh, just finished drafting chapter three. Um, so we are making slow, but um, we are making progress. What's the general nature of why this is taking a while? Is it is it priorities? Is it data collection? I'm I'm really confused as because I thought this was something that like was just literally I have to sit down and write for a few days and we'll be done. I think it's a little bit of the above, all of the above. Um, Jody McGraw, who is our consultant, is the Sand Hills consultant. So whenever something comes up anywhere in the Sand Hills, she essentially gets called in to work on that. Um, so definitely this is kind of not the priority when something really important comes up. Um, however, she does recognize that we've been waiting on it for a while um, and she is actively working on it. It also um, requires some stuff from our end, like figuring out what are like the ropes and homes mitigation, how much that we're gonna mitigate for there. Also, that's going to play into the HCP, um, as well as uh, consulting with different agencies, um, because this is obviously for an agency. And so it takes consultation to actually put together this plan. Um, so yeah, it is a number of factors, but uh, we recognize that it has been uh, forthcoming for a while, and we're definitely trying to get it moving forward. <laughs> the reason I get concerned, of course, is because of the fact that we have this agreement now with Robson that um the priority on it may i mean it was one thing if it was just us we did have a little bit of land that we were still using for mitigation but um it, you know this effectively means and i'm sure we've shared this with the rubs and people as well that you know final approval on this is um you know a year and a half out yeah and then, again the their review the agency review is also obviously a large chunk of that oh, yeah. and there's yeah, nothing yeah, that we're going to be able to do about that. But, I, um, I get that. Yeah. And it could even be longer. I mean, it could be shorter, but it could also be longer. Um, so I, I, I just get I'm getting a little antsy about that 18 month window that we agreed to. And we're, we're sort of like right there. And so if anything goes wrong, we're past it. Okay, um, on the same page 173 on Apton, um, cons says consulting, working to move FEMA projects ahead with staff. Um, is that the reimbursement group, Apton? Uh, yeah, so they are our consultants that are kind of our in-between with FEMA yeah. to make sure that we're getting reimbursed and getting all of our projects the correct documentation to speed up our reimbursement processes. Uh, I'd like to get a not tonight, perhaps, but I'd like to get a better feel for where we are, given that we're something like eight million in total. I'm getting a little worried here. I concur with that. I don't believe that um, Heather is on. No, I don't. But I'd like staff to take that as a note. Uh, to come back to the board with an update on uh, FEMA reimbursements. We are currently working on that. Okay, so that you can report back to us. Right, and it's a process that we're working together with Aptum on. Um, right. We've gotten a really good handle on it today. I was actually helping Rachel with it, so okay. I think we should have okay. it soon. Uh, that, that'd be great because I'm how much outstanding are we? How much have we been reimbursed? There's that only a few things that we have not been reimbursed on right. at all. There's right. others that we've right. We're yeah, looking so. for the details tonight. Yeah. That kind of thing, if you could come back. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. working on it. Yeah, because it does affect our cash flow, borrowing requirements, reserves, right. da -da 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 -da, and all, all the other yes. things. Snowball effect. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Feel for the future as to how. Quickly, should we be able to count on this council? Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I, my sense is that FEMA is not getting zippier, and and with the disasters, yeah, that it regrettably hit the southeast United yeah, States, it it's going to slow it down even more because those people are in desperate need and, and right. you know priorities. Um, I think the last 
Oh, no, wait, wait a second. Um, one, page 174, the rain update. Um, I just wanted to note that if 45.12 is basically the long-term average for our community, and what long-term meaning, if you take the last 40, 50 years as calculated off the district website, it's like right around 44 uh, inches. So um, good news, that's also the dry spot in the uh, district. <laughs> when you look at Facebook and all the other people that are collecting rainfall um, uh, totals. Uh, and then on page 175, um, just a question about the grant funding table, which I do appreciate because it gives us a real good snapshot of where we're at with things. There doesn't appear to be a lot of 2024 um, activity. Um, is that because grants are becoming, either we're becoming less eligible for them the further we get away from the CZU timeframe? Is it grant funding drying up because the state is broke? Um, wh where, where are we on that? And do we need to be looking at a different strategy for our, our grant and grant writer, the money that we're spending on the grant writer? Yeah, I would say, uh... Large, largely right now capacity. Or is it the fact that we don't have staff right now to focus on that? Yeah, staff capacity, so. Okay, so the grant writer doesn't work independently or bring things to us necessarily. No, they definitely, um, Susan Robinson, our grant uh, consultant, will flag grants that are relevant for us. Um, however, we have a lot of grants and projects on our hands right now, and so, um, trying to bring another into the fold um, is kind of a uh, a tough thing. Uh, but if there is one that's relevant, um, we definitely could go for it. But yeah, right now it's just we're trying to work through our FEMA and grant projects that we have funded so we can get them, uh, you know, utilize all those funds rather than having some go to waste. Is the grant writer then on a fixed retainer or is it uh, time and materials that she only gets paid if she's doing something? I believe it's she only gets paid when she's doing something. Okay. Yeah, it's my recollection that it's a time and materials that she's submitting hourly. Okay, yeah, because I saw a payment that was made to her when I was going through the bill list. I was just, just wondering about that. Okay, so your pipeline's full, don't really have the capacity to do a lot more right now but we don't want the prospective pipeline to get completely empty because then we have to restart from scratch. So, um, okay. Yeah, keep our eyes out, but uh, yeah, not too much activity recently. Okay, great. Thanks for covering that. Uh, any questions for, on other items on the consent agenda from other board members? Okay. Uh, well, given that, uh, we have... No district reports. Well, I believe we need to actually, that's the reason I was asking. Oh, okay. We actually right. need to take action on the consent agenda. Uh, um, so we have to vote that the consent agenda um, is approved. Uh, we need public comment first. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought I was seeking that, but okay. Uh, is there any public comment on the uh, consent agenda items? That's an 80 page bill list. It's more than five months worth of bills. That's an awful lot to digest. Um, so I hope that they will be coming more frequently and in smaller doses. Um, so I only have uh, two questions. On page 116, uh, there's a bill from the Van Windeman law firm and I've never heard of them, so I just was wondering what did they do? What did they do for the district? And then on page 126, there's another bill to the City of Santa Cruz Finance Department for something called the JSSH program. So I'm curious about what that is too. Thank you. I can answer the JSSH. That's the juvenile salmonid salmonid steelhead, uh, something along those lines. Uh, but it's a kind of annual reporting that's done that's a fish count all over the county. And then they compile that into a report that shows mm -hmm. basically how our fish are doing. Um, and based on that, that's how a lot of management of our waterways is done. Is that, is that Don Alley's project? Yeah, correct. Okay. 
And the Van Wendeman law firm? I, I don't know. Um, I can't answer it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. Don't have an answer. Um, okay. Um, so we vote uh, to approve. I want to make a motion that we vote to approve the consent agenda. Um, it's in front of us. Mark? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just got the flash across my screen. I had raised my hand. This is Nicole from Brackenbury. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt your motion. It was for Chris. Um, in regards to grants, um, I know that we were trying to make a deadline bracket and brave for the block grant, which is a matching grant to the FEMA. It's for the remaining 10% for the fire. Is the um, SLV pursuing that um, funding source? The deadline's October 31st. I am not aware of that one. Um, I um, yeah, I do not have any information on that one. Okay, it's basically getting your last 10%. Um, it's a matching fund um, for the, the FEMA. So I can send it over to um, Garrett. He can forward it on to you, but it might be an opportunity to pick up some of that funding. But it's yeah. October 31st. That'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, two weeks I counting. Um, okay. Uh, okay. We have a motion. Did we have a second? No second. On that. Okay. okay. All right. Roll call vote. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. And Director Lane? Yes. All right. Passes unanimously. Now, the item that I pulled. Right. Since it was part of the consent agenda, I think we have to vote on it. Okay. Yes. All right. Then, uh, Bob, will you make that motion? Yeah, I, I move that we approve the quarterly reports. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> I'll vote again. Okay. Okay. Well, if any oh. public comment? We should have done public comment. Oh, okay. I thought I had it open when you were commenting on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't see anybody online. Wishing to comment on that. Okay. Okay. All right. We can take a roll call. We have a motion and a second. So, yes. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Okay. Item 10 or 11C. <coughs> uh, we have no district reports, written communications, informational material. And now move on to item 15, adjournment. All right. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good Thanks, night. Thanks, ETV.